As a scrapyard techie, everything has got to be either cheap or free. For hardware, this can be challenging and definitely frustrating, but deals can be found. When it comes to computer hardware, I don't want to pay retail. Do you want to pay retail? Stuff that. There is always some new hardware on sale, on special, discounted, whatever. What if that's just not good enough? What if you still can't afford it? Or what if you're just plain cheap? Like, I don't know anybody like that, eh? If any of this applies to you, then you either steal the stuff, not life advice, by the way, or you buy it secondhand. And at this rate, I might need a secondhand, hey? Ugh. As a scrapyard techie, I deal with secondhand stuff all day, every day, both as the buyer for my own technological needs and as the seller out of the scrapyard. Buying secondhand has a few potential pitfalls though. You may get no warranty. The item may be older and not necessarily the latest model. The item may have a shorter lifespan due to being used already and it may not necessarily be in perfect condition. But think of the savings. Think of what you could do with all that extra money. Like, uh... Before you start shopping, do some research. Know what you're looking for. If not down to the exact make and model, at least figure out what you want it to do and not do. Figure out what you would be happy with. Then research, search, and uh, research some more. Check out reviews, unboxings, and problems other people have had. When you're shopping, if you've picked a specific item, maybe check out alternatives, as long as it does what you set out to look for. Thanks to some of the latest and greatest privacy invading ad setups, you don't even need to go looking for alternatives. They're just suggested right there for you. Do some price checking before you begin too. Find out what the cheapest new ones are selling for. There's no point in paying the same price as a new one or more for a second hand one. And don't laugh, it does happen. Some sellers are just dreaming. For used prices, see what other people are selling for and compare. But just because an item is advertised for a particular price, that doesn't mean that's what it will sell for. Allow a little bit of a buffer for negotiations, offers, and the seller dropping the price just to make the sale. Some sites even let you see what items have sold for previously. Now, some of this research can be done along the way, especially as you find and consider alternatives. You may not even have known that a product existed before. So let's go shopping, but where? There's plenty of options out there and I'm not gonna go through all of them. Your big ones being like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. On a more local scale, you've got Craigslist. Here in Australia, we've got Gumtree. In New Zealand, across the ditch, you've got Trade Me. Amazon does some secondhand stuff too, but uh, I've never tried that one. There are auction sites available too for like businesses clearing out all their old stuff. Here in Australia, we have Grays Online. I don't know what there is in the rest of the world, but be careful with auctions. Don't get carried away with the thrill of the chase. You may end up paying more than new or retail for something that's just not worth it. And the last places I wanna mention are enthusiast forums. Now, these can be gold mines because people often wanna to upgrade to the latest and greatest every time there's new latest and greatest. This means that there's often just one generation older stuff and often it's for sale cheap so that people can fund the next upgrade. Often this stuff is not listed anywhere else either because they only wanna to sell to other enthusiasts. I guess this prevents a lot of questions because everybody knows the stuff already. Now you might think that's a bit harsh, but I've been there, I've done that, it does happen. Once you've found something you just have to have, it's time to seal the deal. In doing this, remember, be polite. Manners cost you nothing, but they can save you a lot. Before making contact, make sure you've read the ad in full. Sometimes the questions you wanna ask are already answered in the ad. And as a seller, I get that a lot and it's not great. Beware of automated messages, like both Facebook and Gumtree have this. And if you click the button, it will send a response for you automatically. And it is not necessarily the politest looking thing, or at least I don't think so. And I see them a lot. Also be clear, if you're gonna send a message, then read through it first, or if you're gonna call, make sure you have a list of questions ready to go first. If it's not clear in the ad, ask the seller if they're open to negotiation or offers. Whatever you do, don't just tell the seller, oh, it's only worth X amount of dollars. Nobody wants to hear that. Sure, if you've done some research and found it cheaper elsewhere, show them and negotiate with them, but at least be nice about it. If you're going to pick up the item, try and negotiate a price first, or at least get a feel for a price range. 
just so you're not potentially wasting your time and theirs. Sometimes the price will be dependent on inspection though. Don't forget to factor in travel or postage costs. There's no point in traveling three hours to save 20 bucks or paying 20 bucks in postage to save $10. If you are picking up the item, be prepared. It goes hand in hand with being polite. Be punctual. If you're not familiar with the area, look up some directions and then instead of giving an exact time, maybe give like a half hour window. This will allow you time to make some wrong turns, get a little bit lost, and then eventually find your way there. Whether you've agreed on a price already or are planning to make offers when you get there, make sure you take the correct change. Don't go there expecting change to be given. Don't be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. Last but not least, pay the man or woman. For pickup, this isn't that hard. Give the money, take the item, done. But before that, make sure you've seen it working or at least inspected it first. For items that are posted, it's a little bit trickier but there are some precautions you can take. Get the seller's phone number. That way, if something happens, you still have a way to contact them. PayPal has some level of buyer protection in some cases, but this does not apply if you use the send money to friends or family option. And a lot of sellers prefer this because it avoids the fees. If you're paying by bank transfer, a bank teller who served me once gave me a handy hint. Put your name in the transaction description. That way, if anything happens, there's no dispute that you paid the money. And then if all goes well, the item is yours. Well done. Not like steak. Steak should be medium. But what if you have a problem? What if the item's damaged or doesn't work properly? Unfortunately, nine times out of 10, you are on your own. You may be able to contact the seller and if they didn't know about it, hopefully they'll help you out. On the flip side though, some people are just plain jerks. But that is just one of the risks of buying secondhand. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Hopefully you have more wins than losses. I know I have. For example, I bought a bunch of computer hardware together, like a motherboard, a CPU, and an NVMe SSD. So I primarily wanted the CPU. So I got the CPU, well, I got the whole lot for just what I was willing to pay for the CPU, which was great. So I got it here, plugged it in, I tested it, and I think the SSD showed up once and then failed to show up again, ever. So. This was a Samsung 960 EVO uh, NVMe M2 SSD. So I contacted Samsung and went through the entire warranty process. First, check to see if it was under warranty, which it was. And then I went through the process of returning it to them. The process did take a while. I think it was over a month. But yeah, I sent the SSD back to them and then eventually they checked it out and sent me back what I believe is a brand new one. They didn't get my name right either. So um, I have Mr. Nathan Steo's SSD. If you ever meet him, I, well, okay, fine. It's me. They just made a typo. But on all their paperwork, on all their emails, they say, if your details are wrong, let us know and then we can fix it. I'm like, okay, cool. So three different stages. I let them know my name is wrong. Right from the start, all the way through to the end, I'm still down as Mr. Nathan Steo. Good job, guys. But it's here, it doesn't matter. Now look, I said in the first video, I won't be doing a lot of hardware unboxing. In fact, I don't plan on doing any hardware unboxing. And I really didn't plan on doing any unboxings. But this is one of those rare instances where I actually have new hardware. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do an unboxing. I only get one take at this, so wish me luck. Or, you know, watch the disaster that is about to unfold. We have a Samsung NVMe SSD 960 Evo M.2. That's what it says on the back. I think I called it M2 before. M2 M.2, I, I don't know if anyone really cares, but yes. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see that there is a sticker here that's still intact. And there's a sticker all the way along the bottom here that's intact. So, brand new by the look of it. Let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. You know, if you were sitting here watching this in real time, it would be really boring. But thankfully, due to the magic of video editing, you don't have to. I think I butchered that box. So I've gone for the bottom edge. There's part of the box now. My bad. All right, let's turn it right way up. 
So we have. Ooh, there is nothing else in that. Shiny. Now I'm going to try not to actually touch that. But let's try and see what else is in there. So I can see in the back that there is some documentation of some kind. Oh yeah, so that lifts out. So we have the SSD itself in its own tray. Entree? Ha <laughs> ha, it's French. You stay there. And then the bottom part of the tray and an installation guide slash warranty statement, which is also sealed. Okay, well, that wasn't exciting as I thought it was gonna be, but there you go. Unboxing complete. That was definitely a win. Anyway, if you wanna see more, subscribe. If you liked what you saw, or even if you didn't, you know, show us your thumbs. And uh, you can follow along on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, we are now doing a new thing on Twitch. Mrs. Scrapyard Techie and I are live streaming retro gaming every second Saturday night at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the replays will be available on YouTube afterwards if you don't want to follow live, or if you can't follow live. We hope to see you there. Thanks. Bye.